Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my channel. Okay, today, snippet video again. I've worked my flowers, finished them, and put them on the back of the cover. So I'll just bring this up to the camera so you can see the final result. I ended up doing some bullion knots at the end of my little dead stick. Then I went back through with one strand of a green and did some little twiggy bits, which is classic Jennifer. Let's bring it up right up to the camera. You can see those little things there, those itty bitty bits. There is two different types of browns in there just to sort of give it a little bit of variegation, but kept it simple because at the end of the day, it is a bit of a dead stick look. I then did some extra stitching here, some vertical boro stitch here. I had a, um, a line of stitching going through in just cotton, but I could barely see it. And I sort of, as the piece evolved, I decided I'd take that bit out and um, redo it with some green. Uh, what else did I do? Oh, I put this little piece here as well. I just felt like it could do with a little bit more thickness to it. And then I used my um, glue stick which is just one of these guys. It's um, Study Mate. I get it from Office Works here in Australia. But any any good glue stick, I think this is still student quality. It's nothing um, really, really special. Whatever's uh, affordable, test a few. And as long as you put enough on, it should adhere fabric, no problems, which this does. So really happy with the back of my book. And of course we have the inside already. Happy with this little one. So it's coming along. Now the front cover is where I wanna to work today. And I did do a little bit of work on it. Um, I ended up adding this. Now I was inspired by an image I saw on Pinterest. And it was a bouquet of flowers held by um, a heap of crocheted element or lacy element. And I did have this out at one point, and I was going to add that to it, just to make it sort of interesting. But <clears throat> I know I want to put that botanical label, so I've just put it aside for now because I have a feeling that it might not work with the little label that says, you know, botany or whatever is the one we pick. So, yeah, I end up getting rid of the tree branch look I had there. I thought oh, I'll go for something different. Now, what I do want to do is um, finish the branch that holds this little cluster of flowers. The theory is there's a line going up here, a line of them there, a line of them here, and a little twiggy thing there. So it's just a case now of picking a green. And remember when... I started this, I thought I'd pick up the red little flower in that background fabric. Let me bring it up to the camera. See, there's a little burgundy flower and some pink and blue little guys in the back. I've picked a pink to sort of bring the background into the foreground. So that was my theory there. Now, we need a green. And we sort of want something a little bit dark I think I don't think a pale yeah it's just not going to be seen it's a little bit too pale this might be too heavy yeah when I do branches and that in this type of bottle green it, it really feels childlike it's like a color you'd pick up as a kid to do something green I don't know that's probably weird but that's what it makes me think of. So I tend towards an olive green or an apple green. See, that's not too bad. It is fresh. Do we want it to be fresh? Do we want it to be more moody? More grungy. This is a DMC crochet cotton. That to me is a wonder fill, I believe. But I'm not 100% sure. 
Can't keep up with it all. Maybe this, oh, that's a stranded cotton. I prefer a pearl cotton if I can get it because then it sort of doesn't twist and break apart. Like I love my stranded cottons, but they do have their place. And these pearls and Appleton wools, I think I'm gonna go the darker one. We can always come back through with a lighter one if it's looking a little, you know, heavy. I need a needle, come on ducky. Put the needles in his tush. So, we are ready. Now, I don't know how we're going to do this. We need to... Lots of little connecting... Little... Oh, my phone. I better turn it off, hey? It's been ringing already this morning. The girl needs some quiet time. Um... Might start with this branch up to here. I also need to decide what I'm going to do for the center of the flowers, whether I do a bead. I sort of feel like the beads don't suit the piece actually. Is that make sense? Might do a quite a loose lazy daisy so that it feels a little open. I think the image from Pinterest, unless you save the image, it's very hard to go back and find it. And I went to Sarah and Rachel's mood board they've created for um, uh, the Roxy Journal of Stitchery Treasure Hunt every fortnight when they give us the new prompt. The girls, I think it's Sarah, put some images onto a mood board that we can all all see. And um, so, and I haven't looked at it for a few weeks. So I went in there just to see what the girls had, what had caught their eyes for the prompt flowers or nature. And um, I spotted, I don't know, I think it was a piece of white work. It was using crocheted elements to create flowers so I clicked on it to get a closer look at it and then it sends you down a rabbit hole because then 20 million pictures from that one image send you down another you know so I'm just sort of going to run these little leaves through. I sort of want to keep it a little stick-like. Yeah, and then up pops this image and I'm like, oh, that's a different way of splaying flowers out on a page. And that's what it's all about. The flowers themselves, there's so much inspiration in Jennifer's book that I'm not too worried about that as such. It's more the layout of the flowers, like how you're going to build them onto your little page. That's, you know, keeping it different. You don't just want to draw a tree each time. And that little flower looks like it's behind the leaf, which is what we want. Yeah, it's not about just same old, same old. You've got to mix it up a little bit. So when I saw the, the gathering of gathering of something to hold something, I thought, well, well, let's maybe the old boy, the botanist, has picked some flowers and he's just wrapped a bit of twine and fabric around them to get them back to the ship. See, I'm still on that tangent of a explorer. If his wife was traveling with him, he might be taking some back to her. So I'm just keeping it simple. Just working my way to the tip of this little cluster. 
to finish it off. The flowers themselves, I just did a star, you know, five points of a, you know, stitch. And then I went back and started filling in the little quadrants. I was watching this movie with my husband and it was the silliest movie. Heap of kids going through a door in their house and it just happened to be those one of those magical houses. And then they are guardians of time and yada, yada, yada. And he'd been playing um, Xbox all day. He's got hooked on Ark, dinosaurs, magical. Can you see a theme happening here? Magical time. No, not really magical. It's more just dinosaurs on a planet and you've got to survive. And you tame them and you ride them and you fight other dinosaurs and you build your stronghold for all your dinosaurs. So he'd been playing that all afternoon and I'd been um, cooking meals for my dad. So I'd spent oh, pretty much all day. I did three dishes and I ended up with 50, 51 meals. So I'm going to have another crack at it today. But um, I don't even know where this story was heading. I've gone off on 10 different tangents already. There, so I'll, I'll come back to the meals. So Hubby was playing his ARC all day. Now they've switched off the servers or something and now everyone after about seven years is having to restart a new version of it on new servers. Obviously there's so many people playing that their servers can't hold all of these kids playing off. Call them kids, for goodness sakes, playing these computer games. So yeah, he was fiddling around with that all day, most of the day. And um, then I was finally, I sat down. I did a little bit of stitching in the morning. I did an hour in the morning, filmed a video, and then started my day. I had already got my groceries the day before, so my day was to cook as many dishes as I can. Hope to see Dad in the next 10 days. So I thought, oh, I'll just get them started because then if suddenly we decide to go up to the farm, they're ready to go. So that was the plan. And um, last night he puts on this fantasy type movie with these three kids. It reminded me of, is it Lion, Witch and the Wardrobe? Narnia, those types of films. Three misfit kids. Travel through the door into a new world, fight the bad guy. You know, it's so predictable, those movies. And you know what was annoying me? And it's because I picked up stitching then. I was like, nah. I put a, <laughs> I'm such a naughty girl. I put an earplug, a, um, you know, ear, what do they call them? Oh, I don't know, Apple things that earphones but they're those little buds I put one of them in one ear I set my phone up to the side and catch up on YouTube and I hadn't been watching um, Sonia Stepto for a few days so I knew I had some good Sonia movies ready to go <laughs> my type of movies and um, so I had that in my ear I had Sonia chatting in my ear and this Narnia movie going, plus I was stitching, stitching this. I finished the little one for the back cover and I was like, oh, what else can I do? And I thought, oh, I'll just start the flowers. So I went looking for inspiration, found that, that image. And of course, Pinterest, once you go down a rabbit hole of one image that say saved by Sarah and Rachel and you click on it and you go down to the person that put that up may have, have their own board of images and then you can't bloom and find it when you go back it's because you start clicking on pictures everywhere so that was the end of that and I was so wanting to show you the image it was so pretty it was very sweet girly girly colors lavenders and things like that 
Oh, I don't like that. That's, that's a big leaf right at the very top. That doesn't make sense in my brain. So it was a big day after cooking all day and finally getting to sit down. But um, what I was going to say is the music in this bloomin' video. It's like they were trying to create the moodiness of the the you know traveling back in time or traveling through a portal into a mystical time <clears throat> it was a bad wizard and some little fairies and you know all that type of stuff and um the music was too much it was like they'd found someone who put the composition together for them and then just went for it and it was like overpowering and maybe because I was doing needlework and I wasn't really watching the screen that's all I was picking up there was more music than there was them talking it was very unusual I even commented to my husband I said that music is a bit a bit overpowering and he said he agreed he said yeah he said it's like they're trying to build the sea and convince us that it is this magical world. Um, with this really strong music. So I'm just doing little lazy daisies. Look at my loop there. Somehow I managed to jigger up the thread, but it doesn't matter. I've knotted it off, incorporating that little loop into my knot so it's not going anywhere so that was my evening just a little bit of stitching a silly movie like usual and Sonia or somebody chatting in my left ear as I stitch my perfect evening. Hello, Sonia, if you're watching. I like Sonia's video. Feels like I'm sitting with an old friend. Sorry, Sonia, didn't mean to say you're old. Oh, gosh. You know what I mean. It's like when you get together with the girlfriends and you're having a stitch. That's what it feels like with some YouTube people. You're just hanging out hanging out with the girls, talking, talking rot. Not that you're talking rot, so, oh my goodness. <laughs> you know what I mean. I'm just working my way back down this little. My colors are probably a little bit bright for this piece to be honest but we'll keep going with it maybe I can bring a stick color into it just to put some little twiggy bits so yes yeah, so I mentioned I'm cooking for dad getting some meals ready to run up to the farm to help him out he's harvesting onions at the moment my goodness i tell you that boy so much for slowing down not he is tired but you can just tell he's tired which is to be expected gee that looks crooked i've got this i've got this bendy kinky thing happening and then i've done a straight stitch and it just doesn't look right it's like I've suddenly changed the style of the plant. Yeah, he's, he was a bit down last couple phone calls. There was a small fire that come down the ridge. I'm not, I might have mentioned this. It was probably a month ago now, but he keeps referring to it. And I think it's knocked him a little bit. And it come down the ridge fast and it's burnt out some poly pipe that takes water to the back 
of his farm to a one particular paddock that allows him to irrigate it. So his comments that I'm hearing over and over is that it just never ends. It's just constant, constant money, you know, going out to such things. And some dill has got a fire away. the property it come from. He declares he didn't do it, but Dad saw it actually start up on the ridge where this house is, and yeah, well, I don't want to accuse anyone, but I'm sure the fireys can see where fires start. But it come down the ridge so quickly towards our farm, and then it got to this paddock in the back corner of our farm. So it burnt out the poly pipe lying in the grass leading to that paddock. The posts are all charred, but they're okay. He can salvage the fence line and um, just has to replace the poly pipe if he wants to get water back there. But luckily it went in a direction that hit the creek that's in dad's property and that stopped the fire. I haven't sighted it myself. I'll check it out when I get up there next. But um, if it had gone through the creek, luckily there was a bit of water still in the creek that sort of stopped it. If it had gone through the creek, it would have been off. It, it would have been devastating to the community. It would have been in the next town, which is 40K away, in under an hour, I'd say. He said it was so quick from when he saw the start of it. By the time he ran from the hay shed across his farm to where it was coming towards, yeah, it was it was there. Just so scary. Everything's a tinderbox, but we've had a couple years now of really good rainy weather through summer and spring. And it is going to be trouble because is it La Nina and what's the other one? The one where you get a lot of rain. We've had that for three years and it's now turned back to the dry season one. La Nina, something like that. Don't quote me. I do stitching. I don't do weather forecasts. <laughs> so, yeah, we're now looking at a very dry spring, summer. And there's been all this growth due to all this, um, you know, rain. So the undergrowth everywhere is just thick. Now it's all dying off. So you can imagine it's now a fire waiting to happen. And already, um, oh gosh, and we haven't even got out of spring yet. Already there's townships across Australia that are facing huge fires it's just it's coming it's going to be a dark dark summer i don't want to be a depressing depressing little lady but um unfortunately it's the realities isn't it these days every couple of years you have these bad fires I know you guys over in California seem to cop them and oh, anywhere with good vegetation. It's just, and then you add that summer, summer heat, summer winds. I was talking to a friend of the family that she is a um, volunteer in the SES. So if there is a problem in society, they're the people that volunteer to come and help out in Australia. So firefighting, um, finding lost people, um, oh, any natural disaster pretty much. You can count on the SES to be there in numbers. And um, 
she does a lot of work with the rural fire brigade and I was telling her about, you know, fires and well, we were talking about, I wasn't telling her anything. <clears throat> and she said that the number one cause of fires is actually not humans. It's broken glass sitting in amongst dry grass and then the light just sort of hits it that one time at the right angle <clears throat> and in the perfect conditions, things start smouldering, add some wind and away it goes. She said most of, she had the statistics on it and it was actually really high. I always thought a lot of it was human starting it, but she said then the next highest um, lighting of fire thing is lightning. Just that one spark to the ground out in bush country. A few little embers and away it goes. So I thought that was quite, quite interesting. I'm going to put a few little twiggy bits up this side. I won't put any colour on them. I just want to get, start softening all my So yeah, big day of cooking, big day of cooking. I did um, sweet and sour chicken drumsticks on a bed of rice with rice veggie, uh, roast veggies in amongst it all to get some veg into the boys. Um, what was the other dish I did? Oh, the, I got some nice beef sausages that had all these different seasonings in them and did a crock pot type tomato based, nearly like deviled sausages, but it didn't really taste like them either. But they were yummy on just roast vegetables. I sort of get a heap of veggies and I do trays and trays and trays of them all roasted up. And then I use them to pack around whatever the protein is, the, the meat. Um, and then um, if I'm a little bit short, I've always got the fallback of frozen veg, but I much prefer to do the, you know, fresh veggies. They're just nicer, aren't they? Um, what was the third dish? Gosh, I can't remember. It was only yesterday. Sweet and sour. The sausages. Oh. I, I can't even think. Oh, it's gone. Short was three dishes. Oh, cottage pie. That's what it was. You know, the classic savoury mints with the uh, mashed spud, mashed potatoes on top. That one. And today I've got a heap of mints. I've pre-cooked my rice and I'm going to make porcupines really simple dish bit of a family favorite lovely on some toast so it's a a mince rissole with uh, cooked rice in it and then tomato soup over it all just a really simple two or three ingredients three ingredients it's a bit of a childhood childhood memory now we might put a few little twiggy things through it. I sort of feel like it needs some softening, so we'll put them away. This is where the stranded cotton really comes into its own. You can get yourself a one strand. And having that little, little bit of light color through Should turn the iron on too. 
because I'm going to need to iron it. I might do that next because then I can clearly see where I can put some of these little twiggy bits. Just hold that thought and I'll plug it in. <clears throat> Get it nice and hot. Now, I'm going to try and get my iron to my table. There we go. She's here. Now, the other thing I've got to work out is what colour I put in the centre of these little, little flowers. Ow, getting hot. Oh, I love it when you iron your work and all those little marks disappear. And you see the crispness of your work? It's the best bit. I'm thinking a pale pink for the little flowers. Just pop that there where I can't burn myself. There we go. So this is all about just some little itty bitty stitches to soften it. And they can't be too big. They're like whiskers. Just little. This is classic Jennifer. I love that the touch of that. Just little. Just gives it that little bit of interest, I think. <clears throat> So that's what I've been doing for the last few days. Stitching and cooking. Yeah, I like that. It's subtle, but it's going to soften things. Just where the joint of the leaf is are these little I actually need to go to Woolworths before I start cooking today because I've run out of the containers that I put the you know freeze the meals down in. I did a online order the other day to get my supplies up and they only would allow me to get one of those packs of containers. It's 25 in the pack. And I had a, one lot already plus a, a few. So I had enough to get me started, but <clears throat> if I do up some rissoles, which I'll probably get about 20 meals out of this next session, um, I need some containers. Plus, I still have four boned out chickens in the fridge ready for the next session. And I've run out of vegetables. So I really need to get to <clears throat> the grocery store and order, you know, get another pumpkin, some more sweet potato, some broccoli, some um, capsicum, I think you guys call them peppers in America. And um, that'll set me up ready to, ready to go again. So I'll do my porcupines and then I'll do these roast, roast chickens with vegetables. I still have some drumsticks left. I seem to have jiggered up my order when I did my Woolworths order and I ordered the chicken drumsticks twice, which has given me a lot of drumsticks. So I either come up with another dish or I throw them in the freezer for another time because I sort of feel like I've done enough chicken drumsticks for the boys. I think they'll be a bit over them, to be honest. <laughs> and they really like sweet and sour and the rice so 
I'm thinking I might just save them and they'll be up my sleeve ready for next time. So just thinking along that lines. I guess I'd like to get about 100 meals if I can. That sort of buys me about a month and a half. So I'm thinking I might not need the drumsticks. I'd rather come up with a different dish like a curry or... I need to actually go to the shopping centre and... You know, walk around the grocery store. Might get inspiration. <clears throat> Always forget something when I'm online. It's, oh, it's frustrating. It's all well and good. It's all handy. But I forget, forget items. I'll put a few little spiky bits from the actual flowers out because there would be some behind the plant. I don't know what flower this is meant to be. If I could find the picture again, I could, there may even be a name. There we go. Oh, I love it. Just cute, cute, cute. Put two at the top there. How are we going for time? Plenty of time. I have a feeling we'd be able to finish this little cover in time. I'll end that off. You guys probably can't see what I'm doing. Might zoom in for the last little bit just in case you're wondering what the hang she is doing with those itty bitty stitches. So it's stranded cotton. It's only one thread. Not the six or you know that it comes in. Let me sit zoom in. And you can see those tiny little, see them there? <clears throat> so, whoop, pulled it too hard. I'm just randomly popping them around. No rhyme or reason. I did consider doing a variegated thread for the little flowers. But I sort of felt like that might get a bit too uh, polka dotty. I don't know. Is that the right word? Probably not. So I ended up just going the one colour. Just some little twiggy bits here and there. I was thinking about the next composition while I was having a shower this morning and I sort of felt like I could bring a branch in from the top. You know, like it's draping down. I don't know. Just never stop thinking that's the problem. That'll be another day, another snippet, another day. Definitely got our little journal on the on the hop now. There we go. I think that's probably all I need. So let's knot that off. Okay. I think we're there. I think we have it. Now we just need to decide what we're going to do <clears throat> with the centres. Let's flip it over. <clears throat> now, I'm thinking we need a little pink centre. 
that's pile pink. I'm thinking the pile pink. And I'm thinking we want a very small knot because my thread here is of a decent weight. So, let's go. Let's do some little colonial knots. We'll start at the top here. Wrap it around, wrap it around. You know the drill. Cinch it down tight and pull it through. Yeah, I like that. It's not too in your face. Oh, we could have put a bead in, but I sort of, I think I mentioned this a few minutes ago. I really don't feel like this work feels like beads for the first time in my entire stitching career. Oh, haven't they come alive? Oh, you sweet, sweet little things. Yeah, I'm happy with that. The pink is still very bright, but it's okay. I'm not pulling it out at this stage. Now down to the bottom. Let's head up this one. I'll have to have a flip through Jennifer's three books and um, See if there's something that inspires me for the next little page and then in the next video once I sort of have a bit of an idea of what I'm going to do we'll set the page up get the background all sorted and then we can start stitching the next snippet they're a great size just a little little ditty some more thread because not only do I have to get across yeah a couple more to go then We've got to see if we want to add that piece of lace and get a label onto it. I have so many people ask me, how do you do the quantity of videos for the length of time? I don't know. I find that every day since forever, I've done something crafty while I wait for my home, my household to wake. My husband sleeps, you know, a little bit in and I'm an early bird. So this has sort of worked out perfectly for me because I'm doing it anyway. I'm sitting with my coffee having a, a stitch or a paint or a drawer or a something, making a quilt or something and then once hubby turns up for breakfast, well, then that's the start of my day. And if I'm lucky enough to get another hour or two at some point through the day, even if it's only 20 minutes, I'm sort of using that time as my homework. So it's worked out perfectly. So if you're wondering if you were thinking about doing a YouTube channel, but you're wondering if you could keep up with it, well, have a think about how much stitching you actually do. And you'd be surprised that my hour is just with you guys. <clears throat> and then 
if I'm lucky enough to sit down again to do it, well then that's the homework or maybe doing some general stitching that might lead to another project. You just go with the flow. Mind you, I'm a busy girl at the moment, so you probably have noticed the bit sporadic, the videos. I just, I've definitely backed off on the projects. I don't, I only need one, two, three, so just a little bit. I've backed off on the projects a little bit so that I've just got something simple I can do. Because <clears throat> uh, I can't guarantee that I can get the time to do the homework. The stitching's not too bad, but it's progressing the project along enough that you guys don't get bored with it. Like, I don't know how long it took me to get that rice bag finished. The shabby chic one seemed to take forever, weeks. But we got there. So I'm just not going to start any major works I've got plenty around that I want to do, but between the Roxy treasure hunt projects and the snippet now, I think, and stitch the seasons, that's plenty to see me through to the end of the year. And so far I seem to be able to keep up with it all. But yeah, as I, I warned, I might disappear for a bit of time to do a few things. I'm moving house ever so slowly. But it's coming together. We're, we're slowly getting there. Every time we drive up there, we take another load. But it's the loading of the van, it's the unloading of the van and loading it into the house. And because I've got limited time there and everyone wants to come and visit and chat and have bacon and eggs. <laughs> it was a bit like that last time we had a house up near the beach. It was a family space that we could all get together and hang out. So I'm not surprised that the same has happened. I hope when we officially officially live there which will be next year sometime when we've got time to you know do our thing let's let's move up okay so I'm pretty pretty happy with that but what I do want to do is have a look at whoops in here are these little labels let's make a decision and that then will tell me if this piece of lace can also go on there. I just love the, the dense thickness of it. Now I had... It's very overpowering. That doesn't seem to be as big. I do like it there. I think I'm going to do it nature the physical world including plants animals so i could do a small tag blossom no botanize the study that's the one botanize the study of plants to examine the vegetation kingdom to search for plants with a view to observe and analyze them well that has to be the one do we have a small version of that flora collection and term, a collective term for plants indigenous to a district region or period i think i will go bold i'm going to do the big one i lift that a bit so i can see the scraggy bits of that going to trim it right back to help reduce its visual size. Yeah. So 
So, what have we got? 10 minutes. Oh my goodness. We need to stitch on that piece of scrappy lace. We're going to need Reginald. Nice and thin. Slick. Dangerous. <laughs> this is a piece of lace that came from some French lace. And I cut it off to do something with it. And it never never got used, so it's been rattling around on my desk. And I saw it there and I'm like, oh, wouldn't that be nice to pop on the cover? More texture. And these little cute flowers are popping out from this chunky, lumpy fabric. I like that look. Makes it more interesting when there's layers upon layers. Don't let me down. What are you doing? Oh, he's doubled up. It's all good. A few little stitches. Oh, I did go round all of the elements on this front page with a running stitch too. That was the other thing that you guys hadn't seen. That was me sitting there at the TV going, oh, I've finished the little flowers. I now need to go and film the greenery, but I feel like doing more stitching. So what can I do? So I kept looking at the piece going, oh, I'll frame everything out. As you do, when you can't put it down. I do want to explore herringbone stitch. I haven't done that for years. So the next background I build, I must, which one were we going to use? The botany one, Bot botanize. It's not botanical, it's botanize, the study of. And that's perfect for this little book. We are botanizing through stitch, aren't we? <clears throat> Ow. Reg, behave yourself. Okay. Let's get a few little stitches through the centre here. I'm rushing now. That's all right, we've got plenty of time. We're going to finish stitching this. We're going to attach the little label and then we're going to attach it to the cover and lickety split, we're done. Our little book has its cover, has its back panel and has a stitchery inside. Yahoo buckaroo. We are off and racing with plenty of room for more adventures. As we trundle through nature, taking note of little things. You know, another idea I had for this is I bought myself some gouache paints. Now, I don't need paints, seriously. But that Fleur Woods, I tell you, she's enabled me. She introduced us all to some gouache paints. I've seen Rachel, too, use gouache. Well, it's a very similar product. I think it's Stamperia. Uh, some of her favourite paints. They sort of give you that chalky, chalky look to your painting that you don't really get from acrylics. I guess unless you mix a lot of white into it. But Fleur used her paint set and it turned out it was a really economical paint set. It was from, um, I found mine at a kid's toy shop online. And it was really reasonably priced. I think it was like $14 or something. Which is probably the cheapest paints I've ever bought. There we go. Let's get those little tassel bits off. Now I want to... Um, I need something to glue onto that doesn't make a mess. Use a post-it note. 
yeah so I thought I had a thought that maybe I could do some washing of color over some of the pages or some fabrics it'd have to be really subtle I don't want that bright um, painted fabric look for this little book so it's got to be really really subtle which I should be able to achieve with these squash paints I'll show you the set that I bought there's a heap of them out there but I end up going with the set Fleur uses because I liked its price to be honest because I just felt like it was a good good value for money which makes a change doesn't it when you invest in a new so I thought maybe I can get some fabrics with a little bit of paint on them that should glue nicely so let's get this out of the way I feel like I'm getting closed in here Let's put these little guys away so they're safe for a rainy day with all me bits okay now I'll get my glue stick I just want to check that all this is nicely adhered which it is so let's go for it don't run out of glue Am, aren't I? Luckily, I have spare. Don't want to be stingy, otherwise, it's not going to stick. Glue stick. <clears throat> oh, this one's hasn't been opened, so it's still got its glue color. It is blue sticks. This is the colour it should be, but that one's been sitting on my desk for a little while, so they tend to lose their colour. And they're great because you can see where your glue has gone because you want a, a good coverage. Otherwise, your piece will not adhere. So if you can find the blue ones, grab them. That is not going anywhere. Let's get to the corners. When I did the back using that old one, I had to go back and add some additional glue because I couldn't see where it was a bit thin. There we go, lovely. Now, clean my fingers off and on goes our little piece. That's good. That's going to catch all of those little fibers around the perimeter. So they're not going anywhere. And then it's a case of just work, work your piece into the, the glue you just want a bit of it to ooze into the fibers and it's not going to go anywhere then that'll dry clear so i'm not too worried about that little bit you could use pva glue if you want just be careful you don't get too heavy-handed with the PVA glue because you don't want it seeping through your fabric because then you get those little little areas that are all hard and the, the glues come through to the front. It won't happen so much with this because I've got my Calico, then my decorative fabric, and then, you know, it goes... That's pretty good. Let that sit for a few hours. And it will be stuck. There's my spine. Let me zoom up a little bit. I feel like I'm right up in your business. 
There's my spine. I've got plenty of signatures ready to go. There'll be all sorts of morsely bits hanging out of this little journal by the time I finish. You've got the ribbons. I'll probably end up cutting them back a little bit. But once it gets full of... So you sort of don't want to make any rash decisions. Once it gets full of all of its uh, embroideries and lace, and there's always bits hanging out everywhere. So I might even come back through. I know there was some lace... This piece came off the bottom of that piece. And I thought, oh, I don't really want to lose you. So as I tossed it to one side, I thought about stitching it on my spine. But no, that doesn't look real good. But we don't want to lose it into the abyss that is my desk. So I'm going to pin it here. So when I build... The next background it might potentially be able to be used i think i'm going to make this a bit smaller i don't need it to be as luxurious as it is just a little little tie that's what i'm thinking it'll annoy me being that long more morsels pin in there well i think that's it guys we'll uh leave it at that our little journal is coming along hope yours is too that's better it's not as bulky just some little bits and we'll have to have a decision about what we do do next oh I did find the piece you know, I've been banging on about a panel of background that I created and I couldn't find it in one of the videos I found it and it hasn't found a home yet this one I've still got to stitch down those little bits there but it's just layers of lace and tulle and you know little patches and that needs a home I wonder if it would work on the, you know, the big. Oh, it needs building out a little bit. But gee, a little trim, a little bit more fabric. And that is nearly ready to go. Well, there you go. Maybe it finds a home. We'll see. Is it the right colours for the book? Who knows? I sort of feel like I'm going more of a natural, neutral, darker tone. But maybe we can add, you know, add things to it to bring it up a little bit. Who knows? If I start picking up this pile of linen to do little stitcheries little snippets through the book well then maybe maybe it'll be fine who knows i'm gonna pop it in there actually i might stitch this bit down here and get rid of those two pins because they've been there i did this on the cruise back in march i had some bits of fabric kicking around and i thought what can i stitch i was doing percy the peacock so these were all bits and pieces left. And I just haven't found a home for it yet. Or the right size. So I might just get some little stitch. Oh, goodness sakes. What's the time? Ah, well and truly over the hour. I better let you guys go. You've got to go and do some housework vacuuming wash some clothes you know all that fun stuff if you don't lucky you so i'm gonna just stitch this base down and i'm gonna leave it in the journal and maybe one day it'll inspire me to finish it and use it in the journal okay guys I will say goodbye on that note and have a lovely day.
Okay, bye.